Good evening, uh, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and uh, it's Thursday, May 28th. And what I've been doing the last, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, six weeks now is every Thursday night live on BCA, I'm doing interviews and information sharing relative to what the city's doing uh, for COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, I am uh, letting you know that it's, uh, it's recording live on Facebook tonight. Uh, it will be uh, put on YouTube uh, as soon as we conclude tonight. That's a little uh, different than previous weeks, uh, but it's also live on BCA Brockton Community Access. I do want to thank Mike Simmons from BCA for all his efforts over the weeks, and he's been really uh, doing yeoman's work pertaining to all the, uh, the new reality of Zoom. So with that being said, I have three wonderful guests tonight. I have uh, Linda Cahill again, who is the uh, Executive Health Officer for the Board of Health for the City of Brockton. I have Dr. Rick Herman, who uh, many of you probably read the Enterprise newspaper article. Um, I brought Dr. Herman on as a uh, medical slash pandemic consultant for my office to help the city as we navigate the current coronavirus and then the, uh, the second surge that uh, will likely happen. And then of course, everybody seems to know Steve Hook because he's everywhere, but Steve is uh, the director of BEMA and BEMA is Brockton Emergency Management. Um, and these three individuals have been unbelievably helpful as we've been navigating the uncertainty of uh, a deadly nasty virus known as COVID-19. And I want to just share with all of the viewers today, unfortunately, I all have the sad news of, of bringing the statistics. Every day at four o'clock, Linda Cahill and Board of Health gives me an update. Uh, I'll tell you right now, we've lost 232 residents, 232 Brocktonians have passed because of this deadly virus. And our thoughts and prayers go to the departed, and of course, their loving, surviving family members. Active current cases, meaning current positive cases of Brockton residents dealing with it, 1670, 1,670. Good news on that, ladies and gentlemen, is we were up to almost 2,900 at one point. So, and that was not too long ago. So we're seeing some recovery, which is wonderful. And that's what we want. We want a trending down statistic-wise. Total cases overall, meaning since the state started calculating, we're just a shy under 4,000. We're at 3,992. Uh, cases. So, again, I thought it was extremely important to have Dr. Herman and and I say Dr. Cahill because Linda has a doctorate in nursing and I'll call I'll call him Dr. Hook, Dr. Hook as well. But at the end of the day, these are the individuals that I talk on a regular basis. I rely on their expertise and their professionalism and, and quite honestly, they're saving lives in the city of Brockton. So again, the way we've done it every week, it's, it's, it's a really casual Q&A. Uh, bring up most important talking points that you want to share and as my mother always uh, raised me, uh, ladies before gentlemen. So Linda, good evening. Thank you for joining tonight. Good evening, everyone. So I just want to tell you what we're doing at the Board of Health. So we, re we receive our cases from um, the statewide DPH Maven system, and then we contact our positive cases. We have assistance from Partners in Health, which is actually a global initiative. So in Massachusetts, we have contact tracers that help us contact our patients that are positive. Uh, we talk to our, we interview our patients, tell them that they have to isolate, then we identify their contacts that have been within um, six feet of them 24 hours before their symptoms started, and those individuals have to be quarantined for two weeks. We send out information, we give them masks and gloves, paper thermometers if they don't have a thermometer, and we uh, give them educational information on how to quarantine and isolate, um, and then um, we follow them. Um, and thank goodness for the contact tracers because because of the volume, it's really difficult for the number of nurses that we have. But um, as the mayor has said, people are getting better. Um, I just want to reiterate, I'm sure you've seen all in the news, uh, to social distance, stay at home if you're sick. Please call your doctor if you are sick. Get tested. Anybody can get tested at the boxer tent, but you have to make an appointment first. And the phone number for that is 844 Four eight three seven eight one nine. Um, when you're out in public, please cover your face. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy a mask. You just need to cover your face with a handkerchief or a scarf. Um, again, social distancing, six feet apart, and frequent hand washing for uh, 20 seconds, and cleaning touchable surfaces frequently throughout the day if you're at home. And um, also, if anybody has any questions, they can call us at the Board of Health. It's five zero eight. 5807175. Thank you so much. Linda, I want to thank you again. And, and Linda just shared uh, is extremely important. Again, the collaboration between 
Sue Joss at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center and Kim Holland, who's the CEO at Signature Healthcare and Brockton Hospital, to create the uh, tenting uh, capability of tests at Brockton High in the parking lot. Steve Hook played a big part in that and setting up the tents as well. And, and, uh, and again, the testing was originally for anybody who had symptoms, anybody exposed, anybody that was an essential worker, not just in Brockton, but neighboring communities. But as of a week ago, last Monday, it's, it's for anybody, anybody and everybody that wants to get tested, they do have to call that 844-483-7819 pre-registration hotline. Uh, but you know, if you, if you have uh, a desire to be tested, uh, there's uh, people ready, willing, and able to assist you. So you call that number. It's at Brockton High, 470 Forest Ave. Again, it's uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day. And again, Linda has been uh, extremely helpful when she um, came in after John McGarry stepped aside. And we thank John again for his professionalism and his expertise as well. But um, Linda's been a, a really extreme uh, advocate and, and assistance on the um, health equity task force that we created in the office working with elected officials and people throughout the community. And it is gonna make a difference. We sent a letter to the governor just recently uh, requesting additional data that would be helpful to Brockton and the diversity and the beautiful community here that we all call home. So with that being said, I'm gonna open it up to Dr. Rick Herman. Doctor, good evening. Evening, good evening. Mayor. Um, thanks for having me on tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, as, uh, as you know, I've been an emergency physician in the city of Brockton for the past uh, 40 years, but as I like to say, I've only been a COVID doctor for three months, so I'm learning along with the, the rest of all of us, and uh, it has been a pleasure working with you. Um, we uh, have daily phone calls with the COVID team. I've uh, been uh, being invited on calls with the local uh, clergy, with the nursing homes, seniors. Uh, so it's really been an eye-opening experience for me as we kind of help navigate this. I wanted to share, if I can um, share my screen, just some of the data that we've um, uh, collected recently and um, uh, give you just a sense of where we are, where we've been, and then as we navigate the uh, reopening of Brockton and Massachusetts. So this is uh, where we are as of uh, death toll yesterday. Well, I know now we've passed uh, 100,000, but uh, the uh, impact is uh, easier to understand if you consider that the city of Brockton has about the same population as the number of deaths uh, in the United States of America. So it's quite uh, a, a pervasive problem for all of us. This is what we're going by, okay? So this is the dashboard that the um, Massachusetts Department of Public Health uses. And I'm not so much concerned about the numbers as I am about these indicators because we have to come up with something to guide us as we reopen the various aspects of our lives. And how do we know what to do unless we have the data? So uh, the Indicators here, these are measurements that we use to help guide us in opening up the state. We look at the amount of positive tests that there are, the number of people who have died from COVID-19, how many people are being admitted to the hospital, both on the regular floors and in the intensive care unit. We look at healthcare system readiness that we measure really by uh, how much bed capacity there is, how, much bed, how many beds are available uh, to patients, how many ICU beds are there, how many ventilators are there, so that we know if we start getting near uh, capacity, we've got to shut things down and take a step backwards so that we don't overwhelm the healthcare system. Likewise, we have to understand what our testing capacity is, and as Linda will tell you and is doing a phenomenal job with, <laughs> we have to have the ability to uh, trace all of the contacts when somebody gets sick. This is uh, our case count. You just heard the totals. The top line there in gray is the total number of cases, and quite honestly, still going up, going up slowly, but still going up, and the number of active cases, that is folks with symptoms still coming down, but coming down slowly. So we still have COVID-19 in the city of Brockton. <laughs> Thankfully, the number of hospitalizations are going down, so we can drill down. This is a combination of the two hospitals in the city. So if we look back at the, at the end of April, uh, just a month ago, we had over 200 patients combined in the two hospitals in the city that were hospitalized. Now we're down to closer to the 80 range. So 
very, very good trend coming down uh, nicely. But still, we've got 80 people in the hospital, including more than a dozen in intensive care units. So it's still around is the message. This is the number of deaths. Uh, the big uh, brown line going up and up and up is our total number of deaths, which is uh, now at 232. The bars across the bottom are the number of deaths each day. Uh, it looks like the number of deaths each day is coming down from our peak in mid-April, but we're still seeing deaths each day. And we want that number, uh, obviously, to be zero. This is some new data that we really have not shared until just um, recently. This is um, a data from Sue Joss at uh, Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, and this is uh, really just a snapshot of testing. This is not total testing in the city. Total testing in the city would have to include the hospitals, the private labs, uh, the uh, pharmacies, uh, but at least we have gotten a snapshot uh, for uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. And this is weekly numbers. We started out back in the middle, in the uh, beginning of March, no positive tests. Uh, in mid-April, we were at 50% of the people that were tested were positive. And now we're down to about 15% of the people are tested. And we uh, cannot get uh, demographic information from the state regarding uh, ethnicity because they just don't gather it. But uh, thankfully at Neighborhood Health Center, they have started to gather it. So we're starting to get a little bit of a peek in the window at our various populations in Brockton and can see uh, based on these numbers, the number of individuals who are testing positive for COVID-19 broken down by uh, ethnicity, nationality. Uh, and so the yellow line uh, is the, the yellow bar is the actual number of positive cases. The blue bar is the number that we would have expected based on the percentage of testing that were done. So based on the percentage of uh, Cape Verdean uh, nationality that had testing done, we would have expected to see 572 positive tests, but we saw 774, way, way more than we would have expected. In the Haitian community, slightly more. Uh, and uh, and so on and so forth. And what we're going to be able to do, hopefully with the uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health data and as we get uh, data from the hospitals, is try to understand where the uh, uh, issues are with um, uh, populations out of proportion to where they should be so that we can do more outreach, more education, speak in the right language and um, share this information with people that need to know. But we're not there yet as far as all of our indicators in Brockton. We still have to get some more information on, uh, on our healthcare readiness regarding uh, surge capacity in our hospitals, how much testing capacity we have. It's great that we've got the high school and the two hospitals doing testing, but it's not going to be enough as the, as the uh, 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 schools open up and colleges open up around us. We're going to need more testing capacity and definitely we'll need uh, the increased contact tracing uh, capabilities. So this is how it works. This is the message to everyone. Get tested if you have symptoms. If it's positive, you isolate. Then Linda and her crew contact everyone that you've been in contact with in the previous uh, day or two before your symptoms started, and then quarantine. And this is just a little bit of uh, uh, information. A lot of people confuse being isolated with being quarantined. They're different. We use them kind of interchangeably, but isolation is after you develop symptoms and you have to have to be kept away from the rest of the population, you're isolated. Quarantined is if you've been exposed to someone who has symptoms but don't have symptoms yet, uh, and then you have to be kept away from the rest of the population. So stay safe. Linda went over everything. It's common sense. The more you interact with others, especially indoors, the longer that interaction, the higher risk of uh, spread with uh, COVID-19. So uh, I would say that's kind of a an overview of the uh, the numbers. I know that Mayor has uh, asked me to concentrate uh, on uh, populations at risk, the elderly, uh, and to figure out who in the city is at higher risk of uh, developing uh, COVID-19 so that we can try and get the message targeted to the uh, right people. And I really look forward to working with you, Mayor, and other members of the other members of the team and the city leaders.
Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Herman. I mean, that's the information that we need. Um, and it's really, really helpful to me as mayor. And I know everybody watching this right now, it's extremely helpful. And I do want to thank Sue Joss because, you know, Brockton has always been made up of such a diverse population, which is wonderful. And and, and many uh, Brocktonians are saying, you know, how many Caucasian white people got it? How many Cape Verdeans? How many Haitians? How many African-Americans? And DPH, the State Department of Health, does not provide that. Um, but Sue Joss, they calculate that. So that is extremely helpful. And that's a window and a snapshot. Uh, and it's actually uh, quite uh, eye-opening in terms of the numbers and the expectations based on statistics. But what it does come down to is people adhering to the social physical distancing and uh, before we have uh, Steve Hook talk, I just want to say as mayor, um, I would say a vast majority of the residents are adhering to the health guidelines and practicing what we need to practice. Mandatory masks, um, social physical distancing, staying in and around your home. Um, but, you know, with the nice weather, uh, people attempted. And quite honestly, this weekend, it was extremely disappointing and frustrating. Uh, there were house parties. Uh, there was basketball pickup games, soccer games. I had Brockton police going here and there and everywhere. So, Again, I just plead uh, as mayor and as a dad of three young kids, let's just get it right. Let's just all get on the same page. Um, we all saw on the news uh, what happened in Missouri, right, in the Ozarks, where it was 5,000 people in a swimming hole. And that's just, uh, that's just a recipe for disaster. So I want to thank Dr. Herman and I want to thank uh, Linda Cahill for the information and for their, really for their guidance as we uh, maneuver this. And as Dr. Herman had said to me, it's, it's not um, if we have a second surge, it's when. And our hope is that it will be a minimal, minimal um, type of event, but it is coming and we need to take all precautions. And one of the precautions we need to take is to get materials that are going to help us fend off this deadly virus. And uh, Steve Hook, uh, the floor is yours. As director of BEMA, you've been a, a wonderful partner and truly uh, an asset working with your connections at MEMA, which is Massachusetts Emer Emergency Management and, 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 and DPH as well. So Steve, if you want to give us an update, we'd love to hear it. Uh Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. So, Mayor, I think you and I have been, um, we started talking about COVID back in early February, I believe. Yes. And we talked about um, the plans we had in place, uh, emergency dispensing plans, and we talked about the homeless, and we talked about things that we never thought we, sh we would be talking about, such as uh, makeshift morgues and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the emergency management agency has really been uh, su supplying logistics to this whole pandemic. Uh, we were involved early on with Perkins Park, getting uh, the, the tents and beds and blankets and pillows and bathrooms and showers and generators and lighting. There's a lot that goes into setting up one of those sites. Um, we, we were involved in setting up an emergency shelter at North Middle School. Um, and, you know, a lot of the stuff that we did early on, we did it before the state even started thinking about doing it. Right. We were very early in doing it. Uh, we were identifying locations where we could, we could put people who were positive and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> to date, with the assistance of the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, the city has received uh, over 58,000 pieces of PPE. And those come at no cost to the city. That's from the state to, to the emergency management agency. Um, we, you know, early on, PPE was difficult to get. Even the state didn't have it. Luckily, the emergency management agency, BEMA, had 16,000 masks on hand that we were able to distribute early on to our first responders when getting masks were, was difficult to do. Um, so we've received probably 37,000 masks. We, we've uh, provided them to all types of city departments. We've given them to the police department to give to residents that need masks. They see people walking down the street that don't have a mask. Um, we've given PPE to over 34 different agencies and businesses um, from anywhere from the hospitals to city departments and um, other facilities within the city, nursing homes and stuff like that. Funeral homes we've dealt with um, that need PPE. So currently um, 
status quo. We're still receiving PPE. We're still delivering PPE every single day. We're getting requests. We're getting deliveries. Um, so we're doing pretty good currently with the PPE. We also were involved with the testing site, setting up the testing site uh, with Brockton Signature Health and Brockton Neighborhood Health, uh, great partners, and MEMA, uh, you know, assisted us with PPE for that. And obviously the, the, uh, the, the tents and all the other logistical support that goes along with that. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Steve. And, and, and Steve hit it on the head. I mean, we, you know, I was sworn in January 6th as the 50th mayor in the city of Brockton. And, uh, you know, my wife's medically trained. She's a physician assistant. And uh, she had this on her radar when this uh, deadly virus was in China and Italy. So we knew it was coming. And thanks to Maria, um, I was able to uh, have some roundtables uh, early on. And, and Steve said it. We, we were being very proactive uh, out, of the, out of the gate. And it was, uh, you know, working with Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito. Uh, working with our partners uh, at the local hospitals. And um, I just want to make it clear again, for the last, the, the last two months or so, two and a half months, we've been having standing calls Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at one o'clock, three times a week with Kim Holland at Signature Brockton Hospital, a representative from uh, Good Samaritan Medical Center, um, Sue Joss from Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. We have uh, uh, John Yazinski, who's the CEO of Father Bill's Mainspring, and then we have a representative from High Point. So um, these are folks that are making a difference. We've been working in collaboration and um, Linda and, and Rick weren't on the call, um, but Steve was there. And my first call was, listen, this is not about competition. I don't care what hospitals who. Uh, this is about coming together, uh, working in collaboration to save lives. And um, they have, to the credit of all those folks, um, you know, stepping up, sharing information. I just want to again reiterate, because that might've been confusing. Dr. Herman's information was only from Brockton Neighborhood Health Center in Sioux Joss. It's just a quick snapshot. Uh, it's not in total, it's not from any other providers. So we hope to get that, but it definitely gave us some, uh, some type of uh, ethnic uh, breakdown, which is helpful and we'll build upon that. But um, you know, when, when some folks were saying, hey, what are you gonna do about people facing homelessness? Steve Hook and John McGarry came to my office and we thought outside the box and we said, listen, we know this disease spreads rapidly when people are confined. And when there's a condensed population, any given day is 130 folks at Father Bill's Mainspring, 54 North Main Street. So that's a recipe for disaster. So we need to think how we can spread that population out. And we use Perkins Park and Mima stepped up and gave us the tents. It didn't cost the city of Brockton a penny. Um, and ultimately, you know, that definitely saved lives. Now, when people that lived there came down with the disease, um, they were actually sent to Lexington, Massachusetts, to a hotel, which was set up and uh, cost was paid by the state. And then when that got filled, they used a, a hotel down in Taunton, Massachusetts. So um, Steve had mentioned we, we had uh, set up North Middle School Gym um, many, 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 many weeks ago uh, on the off chance that we're going to have to utilize that for uh, uh, quarantine locations for city employees. Um, and thankfully, people that did come down with that disease stayed in the confines of their home. Um, we wouldn't hesitate for a moment to use that or Brockton High School Gymnasium if need be. Uh, but it looks like right now we're trending down and, and hopefully we won't have to use that. But um, it really is a team effort. It really, really, truly is. Um, you know, twice a week I'm on calls and I have Dr. Herman and Linda on the calls uh, as well with all the nursing homes. And uh, let me just be very clear about this. The nursing homes were devastated by loss of life. But the total number of loss of life is not 100% from the nursing homes. Statistically, if I do the math based upon what's reported in the enterprise, it's about 60% loss of life, give or take, uh, is from the nursing home. But the 232 number, again, there's a statistical number, 40% that we're not, and we know that to be true. Um, but again, this disease spreads like wildfire once it hits, and uh, we need to be uh, utmost um, um, respectful of this deadly disease and treat it in a way that no disease in my lifetime has ever been treated. And you know, we wouldn't think in the year 2020 we would have a worldwide pandemic, but we are here. We're here with it. We're facing it and we're taking it on. And with Dr. Herman and Linda Cahill and Steve Hook and, and others, you know, we, we will get through this, but we're only going to get through this together. And two things I want to reiterate, the Partners in Health contact tracing. If you see on your caller ID, MA COVID team, mass COVID team, that is a legitimate call from the state working diligently with Linda 
and the staff at the Board of Health to do the contact tracing, please pick up that call. It's extremely important. And then if also, if you choose to get tested, dial that 844-483-7819 hotline number because that's extremely important if you choose to do that. Is there any uh, additional information that the three of you would like to share at this point? Wash your hands and wear a mask. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And again, um, I just want to thank Dr. Rick Herman. I want to thank uh, Linda Cahill and Steve Hook uh, for their friendships and, and more importantly for their dedication, truly dedicated to the citizens of the city of Brockton. And uh, we'd be in really, really tough shape um, if I didn't have the three of you uh, all around me every single day. You're probably sick of me now, but you know, we'll just continue, right? We'll be vigilant and diligent and um, keep expressing, uh, expressing the message. And I do want to give a shout out and a thank to Superintendent of Schools, Mike Thomas. Mike's been a, a really great um, friend and an advocate and, and really an ally. Um, we only have one health nurse at the Board of Health, Evelyn LeBron, and uh, we knew that we were going to be uh, hampered by a nasty, deadly virus. So I reached out to the superintendent. At that point, um, Linda Cahill, who is the director of school nursing for the last eight years, and uh, seven or eight of her colleagues, school nurses, came on board and helped us over there in sharing and collaborating and working. And that's what it means to work for the city of Brockton. So um, Mike recently helped me because I said, let's maximize the 10 lunch breakfast locations around the city of Brockton. We gave out 5,000 week one, 5,000 week two um, pieces of paper. They were in English, they were in Spanish, they were in Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, just talking about exactly what Linda, Steve, and Rick have said. Wash your hands, social physical distancing, the city curfew, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., and wear that mask, it's mandatory. So. With that being said, I want to thank you all. Um, we'll do this again. I'll be on again next week. I'm going to uh, leave the viewers in suspense on who my guests will be. But again, thank you for your partnership. Have a good evening. And everybody, please stay safe. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you.